If you guys are looking for cheap, fast, and reliable Madden Ultimate Team coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're super great. They got fast 24-7 support. Make sure to check them out, and make sure you use code Poodle at checkout for an additional 15% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys, and today I'm going to be going over the best Autumn Ace for free to be choosing from the Madden The Gathering Solo that you're going to upgrade all the way to a 92. Now, as you guys do know, these cards are super, super solid. They're really good, especially this one. The first batch was like, okay, you're taking Pat Pete. We all knew that. This batch actually is a lot more variability to it. And honestly, a way better batch in general. But before we get into the video, guys, shout out to Grenade or GRX Nade for being a part of the Poodle Squad. I greatly appreciate you for showing support each and every day. Thanks so much, man. But moving on, guys. You guys need coins for any of these players or for the Blitz or for anything coming out uh, you know, tomorrow or an upcoming week. Head over to my reserve down below. Use code Poodle 15% off. Take advantage of the Harvest um, discounts. But yeah, moving on. These players are solid. You get to pick one. So I'm going to be going over. I'm going to be ranking them kind of how I think you should. I'm going to rank them in my ranking. And then, of course, you guys have to understand that rankings are rankings. At the end of the day, also look at your team, right? Because my first could be your second because you have a guy at that position. Or let's say I put Aaron Jones at number four, but you don't have a running back, but you have an end, tight end, and an end, or outside linebacker. Maybe Aaron Jones moves up to two or one for you. So just take as I say it and then subtract what you don't need. But, guys, super excited. Now, let me explain these challenges to you first. Um, they are squads and they are solos. So the issue is here, if you do the solos, it's going to take six days because you can only get one per day. And if you do this only the squad events, it's going to take six days because you only get one a day. So if you go ahead and you actually do half and half, like half, all the squads and all the solos each day, you'll get it done in three days for your free players. So do take that into mind in terms of how you can get these guys. So go ahead, start that up. It does release tomorrow at 1030 Eastern time, uh, AM Eastern time. So make sure you are checking that out. But moving on from that, guys. I'm super excited to get into this. I have a lot to say about these cards, so let's get into the players. All right, so starting off with my number four on the list, Austin Hooper. Now, Austin Hooper really isn't bad. And honestly, he's right there up there with the top 10, you know, top five tight ends. It's just 86 speed is average. You know, like, I feel like at this point, we're, we're tight ends are anywhere between 86 or 87 and, like, close to 90. So, I mean, he's not far apart. Of course, you put play fake. He's going to get all the route running thresholds. So, like, if you need a budget, like, a budget meta tight end, it's going to be Austin Hooper. Because he gets all the route running, he gets all the catching, and he's, like, one or two speed off. He's not horrible. I don't think he's that bad. Uh, the run block's not horrible either. I mean, 72 for a guy that's not a, you know, like, a known run blocker. Not bad at all. Austin Hooper isn't horrible. He's a good tight end in real life. I mean, you know, he, he had his better days with the Falcons, of course. You know, the Browns just run heavy, um, multiple tight ends. So, it's been a little hard for him there. But, as a card... I don't think he's just my favorite option because, like I said, we have Vernon Davis, we have Shannon Sharp, we have Darren Waller, and we have someone else, too. We got that um, the new guy for the uh, the Ravens, and all these guys are faster, or at least slightly faster. So, so far, I mean, I'm leaning towards Austin Hooper as the fourth guy, but of course, like I said, if you have an end or an outside linebacker running back, and the only thing your team is missing is a dual tight end or a second or first tight end, or even a third tight end, this could be your guy. And of course, tight end is more of a depth position, too. Like, you can rock with, like, two or three of them on one team, so I can see where you're going if you want a depth guy. But all Snooper, of course, isn't, like I said, isn't my favorite for my team specifically. I don't see myself using him, of course, because I can't afford the other tight ends, right? So it really depends also on your coinage, like if you can't afford the other tight ends. But, I mean, the, the tight ends have gotten cheaper. But moving on from that, guys, going to my number three. My number three is going to be Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, again, the only thing holding him back from being a top two guy is going to be that speed. If he had a 91, 92 speed, we're looking at him entirely different. Because, right, here's the thing with Aaron Jones and Madden. He's a well-rounded running back. And the issue with well-rounded running backs with not the greatest speed is just that. They're too well-rounded for their own good, right? Like, when you get guys like Saquon who have top speed and everything else can be well-rounded, that's fine. I'll cam everything. I'll make it work. But the speed's not there, right, with guys like Aaron Jones. Um, so, Aaron Jones isn't bad. Now, I mean, 90 speed, 92 excel, 92 agility, 93 carrying, 91 change of direction, 83 trucking, 85 break tackle. Of course, the catch is irrelevant. It's low. It is what it is. Now, his, he's not a power back. But I do like the fact that he's an agile, elusive back with some extra added power. He reminds me a lot of a Saquon Barkley, just slower. That's that's my point I'm trying to make here. So, again, if you don't have a running back or you don't have a backup back and you could really use one, I could see where you go with Aaron Jones, like I said. I just don't see them, I just don't see him or Hooper being dominant. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to get a guy, you probably want someone who can actually make some dominating plays. I don't see Aaron Jones being that guy. Great carrying, great excel. Of course, you can power up and chem him up. He'll get 91 speed, 94, uh, 93 excel, 93 agility, 94 carrying. Probably get that change of direction up a little bit more too you know everything else but i just don't see aaron jones being a dominating force neither do i see austin but i see them being good filling guys that can make a play here and there i just don't see them making consistent plays moving on to number two guys we got daniel hunter daniel hunter is actually super solid here's the thing if they had made his block shed in 89 that's it 
89 block shed. We're looking at the, at the Neil Hunter as one of the premier pass rushers in this game. Because if he gets an 89 block shed, guys, power to become to have a 94 finesse with a 90 block shed. Then you put pass rush on him, you can get his pass rush up to a 98 slash 99. With an 87 speed and 90 excel, he'd be crazy. But I mean, regardless, guys, he is a better Joey Bosa, right? Because here's the thing Joey Bosa gets no block shed with a high finesse move and speed. Then Neil Hunter's faster, better play rec, his better finesse move, and he can actually block shed. So. Here's the thing, if you want a dual purpose, like if you're a guy that doesn't do subs, right? You like to put your left end in, you want him to make tackles, stop the run, pass rush. You take the new hunter, you power him up, you put run stuff on him. You get him to a 90 block shed, a 94 finesse move. Plus powered up, he'll have an 87 speed, 90 excel, 90 block shed, and a 94 finesse move. He's a dual purpose, all world end, right? Or you want to make him the most elite pass rusher ever, you power him up, you kept him up, and see if you can get his finesse move to a 99, you do it, because that's going to hit different. He's going to be an insane edge rusher. But, guys, that speed alone. Well, remember when we got that, um, when we got the Brian Burns yesterday? I said that was like a budgety, ch poor man's version of, of uh, Julius Peppers. The new Hunter literally is D Julius Peppers. He gets the 87 speed and the 90 excel. Of course, to Julius, a little bit more athletic sometimes, but that's crazy. And Julius Peppers usually has a high finesse move and a almost there block shot, but I'm the boy, right? You got your Julius Peppers right here. I think the new Hunter is going to be a stud on many, many teams. I would not be adverse. Like I would not go against the Neil Hunter as your option here. Again, it comes down to what you need. If you have all ends already and you needed a back tight end, that's fine. But Neil Hunter is amazing. Like I think he's super, super good. And like last week we had Pat Pete, and like that was it. Like you really just couldn't justify some of the other guys. I do like the fact that like if you need a back, you need a back. It's fine. You need a tight end, take a tight end. You need an end. There you go. You got a dominant one. Like and these cards aren't just like like Pat Pete was like middle of the pack, top tier cornerback. Like these guys are like top tier at their position. Like I like that. I think that's great. But moving on to the first guy on my list, which you guys probably already knew, Von Miller. Now, Von Miller is going to be an absolute stud. The thing that separates Von Miller from the new hunter is that block shed. That's as simple as that. Coming stock with that block shed means I could do a lot more with what he's good at versus trying to compensate, right? It's like, it's like when, a, when a tight end doesn't get the route running threshold or a wide receiver doesn't get the deep route running threshold. It's like, damn, I got to waste my cam trying to compensate that and get him up to deep route running instead of focusing on what he's good at. When a guy like Von Miller has the block shed in the power, I'm like, okay, cool. You can block shed. You can run stuff, you know, threshold. Let me focus on your pass rushing. So now with Von Miller, you power him up and chem him up. He'll have 87 speed, 88 excel. Also, you know Von Miller's going to get upgrades throughout the year. He'll have 94 play rec. He'll have 92 power move, 92 block shed. You put pass rush on him. You can get his power move up to like a 95, 96, 97, depending on how much you have it up on. He's going to be a premier pass rusher, a premier run stuffer, super fast, off the edge, he can replace, like, again, I'm not saying he's better than maybe LT or Ricky Jackson or Derek Thomas, but again, you can use multiple guys. You can move him to, you can move Von Miller to end if you want. I mean, you can play there. You can move him down to, you know, you can move him into the interior if you really think that's what you want to do. And as well as you can just replace him, right? Because if one goes to 200K and one's free, you take the free one, you, you, you know, you cash out. I could see the value of doing something along those lines, you know what I mean? So Von Miller's going to be my number one option now. Are Daniel Hunter and Von Miller interchangeable? They're this close, right? If Von, like I said, if Daniel Hunter had the block shot, I think he's actually better than Von Miller. Like if he had the block shot, he'd be better than Von Miller, right? Because he would be a better pass rusher, a faster guy. And you know what I mean? Like it's not really much of a comparison, but Von Miller gets the block shot. So at rip, Von Miller's gonna be better. But again, if you have Ricky Jackson, you have Derek Thomas and Lawrence Taylor, maybe you opt for Daniel Hunter. Maybe if you have all those guys and then you have also Aaron Donald and everything, maybe you opt for a guy like, you know. Aaron Jones or Austin Hooper. It really just depends on your team specific and your scheme and what you're working with. Now, as far as depth goes, right? Von Miller, I would consider Von Miller and Hunter depth positions, right? Because at the end of the day, the new Hunter plays left end. You get a new left end, move him to right end. Oh, you get a new end? Put him in the interior if you really think that's okay. Yes, the strength's going to be low. But if you're a heavy pass rusher, maybe you do it. Von Miller, same thing. Move him to left. Oh, wait. You know, I mean, he plays left. You get a new guy, move him to right. Oh, you get a new guy, put him to end. Put him to the other end. You know, like, there's so many possibilities with these guys. And then again, same thing with Austin Hooper. Oh, you get a new tight end, backup tight end. Another tight end, put him as a blocking tight end, as an extra lineman. Do whatever you need to do with him. Aaron Jones, put him at fullback, put him at backup running back, put him at third string running back, use him as camps. Every player here will have a role on the team, and I really do like that. But guys, we're pretty much wraps up the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you aren't to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell, boys. And join the family. If any questions about this player specifically, comment down below. Give me scenarios like, you know, I got this guy and this guy. Should I make the upgrade? Let me know. I will answer. That's about it. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys need corn to pick up anything or you guys want some more, you don't just want one free one, head over to my reserve. Use code Poodle 15% off. Take advantage. That's about it. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.